take a seat. It will please you to know that the school anthem was composed by our own students and one of the composers is actually the secretary to the VC right now. So uh, it's actually a, a pleasant thing and if you listen to the anthem carefully you will hear the word in veritate libertas. That is actually the motto of our school, in veritate libertas. So freedom in the truth. And that's what we've been doing here in the past four to five years. Uh, before I continue, I want to recognize the uh, presence of certain dignitaries here present. We recognize the presence of uh, our prior provincial, the proprietor and chancellor, Father Modestus Ngo Opi. And we recognize the presence of our guest speaker, uh, who is going to present the lecture of today uh, in the person of Chief Anthony Ekenefuna Idibe, son, PhD, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. I equally want I actually, uh, equally want to recognize the presence of our very own Vice Chancellor, Professor Hygienius Ekwazi. <laughs> we have other dignitaries uh, seated among us. We have Professor Oyeshola Dokun OP. He's the Dean Faculty of Humanities, uh, Management and Social Sciences. We have the presence of Professor Isaac Okokolo, Department of Philosophy. He was one of our pioneering deans. And we have Professor Francis Ofo. Uh, he's our outgoing dean in the Department or the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. We have Reverend Dr. Patrick Akune, he's the Dean of Student Affairs. And we have Professor Nito Shenge, he's Faculty of Humanities. We have Father Augustine Ebido, Secretary, Fundraising Committee. We have Reverend Dr. Joseph Ekong, he's the president of the Dominican Institute. We have Reverend Father Clement Dioka, he's the outgoing coordinator of uh, the, uh, the religious studies program in the Department of Philosophy and Religious Studies. We thank uh, all other guests present who will continue to recognize you as we go on with the program. Before I call in the orator, I just have uh, a few remarks. To say that um, it is not an easy task uh, to be involved in the transformation of young men and women into wise men and women uh, fit to serve the society. 
But that is the task that we have undertaken as a university. And it is indeed a laborious uh, task, but it is also a joyful task. And if we are gathered here this afternoon, we are gathered here to celebrate this worthy accomplishment. And we are proud of our students. We can already get some feedback because some of them are already out there and working. Uh, it will please you to know that we are already getting some positive feedback and we are happy. But if we are here today, we are celebrating both the Nigerian intellectual tradition and the Catholic intellectual tradition uh, fused together. And I myself, I'm a product of the uh, Dominican intellectual tradition and I can testify that it is a wonderful thing to be formed in this tradition. If you are not strong, you, don't, you cannot survive in a Dominican institute, I can tell you that. And we are proud to be members of this tradition. And anybody who has taken a course on the history of university education will know that credit to the university system goes to the Catholic intellectual tradition. If you study that, you will know it. And you can't understand university education fully if you have not read Newman's idea of a university. So we are proud members of the Dominican tradition, both the students and the lecturers, and we identify ourselves with St. Thomas Aquinas, with St. Albert the Great, with Catherine of Siena, and many other great um, products of the Dominican institution. And we all here are partakers in that tradition, both as students and as lecturers, because we are all in, involved in the same uh, intellectual enterprise. So, what does it take to be a pioneer? Oh, I don't know if, if any of us have had the privilege of being a pioneer. I myself, I'm the product, I was a pioneer, and I can tell you, it's a joyful thing to be a pioneer. It's not, it has its difficulties. Sometimes people think that being a pioneer is to be a guinea pig, but it is not true. Sometimes when you are a pioneer, you get the best. Because when we are starting, uh, the energies are very high and everybody is putting in all they can to make sure that, you know, we have this wonderful product so that they can reflect a tradition. So I want to assure us that the students we are graduating, they are the best. They are the best. And they are our first fruits. They are our first fruits. And Catholics understand the, the idea of first fruits very well. First fruits are the best. So, um, but also being a pioneer is a very good thing. I know that. Because when you're a pioneer, you can boast about it, you know. So in the next 20, 30 years, when students of this institute meet uh, in their alumni association, somebody will ask, which batch are you? And somebody will say, I belong to the pioneer batch. And being a pioneer batch means you have, you have a right, a right that others don't have. So with that, I, those were the few remarks I had that we, to just to say we are very proud of our products and we are proud of what we are doing here this afternoon. That said, I'm going to call the VC uh, for his remarks so that uh, from there we can go directly into the discourse. Very Reverend Father Ngu, the proprietor and the provincial, the lecturer, Foundation Day Lecturer, and the Chairman of the BOT, Chief Dr. Idigwe, S-A-N, the members of the board here present, I see three members of the board here present, you are duly recognized, ladies and gentlemen. Today's lecture is going to tie around what the young lady has been trying to say is also going to look at the significance of today. That is the occasion. It is the Foundation Day Lecture. I see that there are two ways you can organize a Foundation Day Lecture. You can make it part of the graduation ceremony. 
but it can also stand alone. It can be part of the energy you bring into the graduation ceremony. And that's what we are trying to do. I also notice that there is really no particular way you can organize it. It allows you a leeway to introduce whatever you want to do. So the way we've decided to do this today is to have the foundation lecture. Then we have two discussants who will talk to the lecture after the presentation. And then after that, the guest lecturer, the foundation day lecturer, will then wrap up the lecture. There will be no question and answer session. The discussants will take care of that because they will take all the issues arising from that. So having said that, I want to welcome you all to this lecture. Thank you very much. We thank the, the VC for those remarks. Now I call on Dr. Akolo, the university orator. to present to us our guest of honor. Thank you. Good afternoon once again, everybody. Standing on existing protocol and um, with humility, I would li um, like to ask our guest lecturer to please rise as I read his profile. The profile of Chief Anthony Idigwe, SAN PhD. Dr. Anthony Ikemefuna Idigbe, SAN, obtained his first degree in law from the University of Ife. He was called to bar, after which he obtained a Master's of Laws degree from the University of Lagos, a Master of Business Administration degree from Enugu State University of Science and Technology, a Master of Laws degree from Robert Gordon University, Scotland, a Global Professional Master of Laws degree from the University of Toronto, and a doctorate degree in cross-border insolvency from Osgoode Hall Law School, York University, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> Dr. Idige SAN has over 39 years of experience in corporate governance, insolvency, business restructuring, arbitration, dispute resolution, privatization, capital markets, mergers and acquisitions, and oil and gas. He has advised clients on several complex transactions. He was licensed to practice law in Nigeria in 1983 and in Ontario, Canada in June 2016. He was appointed notary public in 1989 and was elevated to the rank of Senior Advocate of Nigeria, SAN, in July 2000 the founder and pioneer chairman of several renowned organizations. Dr. Edigbe SAN is a member of the Board of Directors Trustees of the Canadian Association of Nigerian Lawyers, CANL, a member of the Association of International Petroleum Negotiators, AIPN, a member of the London Court of International Arbitration, LCIA, a member of the Lagos Court of Arbitration, LCA, a member of the International Chamber of Commerce, Nigeria, ICCN, and a member of the International Insolvency Institute, III. Dr. Gidigbe is the chairman, board of trustees of our very own Dominican University here in Ibadan. He is a fellow of the Institute of Directors, Nigeria, IOD, the International Association of Restructuring Insolvency and Bank Bankruptcy Professionals, the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, London, the Business Recovery and Insolvency Practitioners Association of Nigeria, and the International Bar Association. He is an experienced corporate director, knowledgeable in global capital market operations and business restructuring. He chaired the Capital Hotel PLC between the years of 2017 to 2022, and he currently chairs the Keja Hotel PLC, the Tourist Company of Nigeria PLC, 
the Statutory Audit Committee of Supplied Energy, the London Stock Exchange, LLC, all of which are listed on the Nigerian Exchange. He is also a director of Royal Exchange, PLC. He holds a corporate director certificate from Harvard Business School and a certificate in blockchain law from Osgoode Hall Law School, York University, Toronto, Canada. Dr. Ediges, SAN, is the founder of the Capital Market Solicitors Association, CMSA. He was the chairman, technical drafting committee for the bill that became the Investment and Securities Act 2007, a member the Petroleum Revenue Special Task Force set up by President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan in 2012, the National Coordinator for Nigeria World Bank Global Forum of Law, Justice and Development Project on the Treatment of Shareholders' Rights in Insolvency of Companies between the years 2013 to 2014, the Chairman, the 2017 Nigerian Bar Association Legal Profession Regulation Review Committee, a committee which reviewed the regulation of the legal profession in Nigeria, and the chairman, the review committee for the 2007 Investment and Securities Act, which he helped to draft, the report of which has resulted in the Investment and Securities Bill now before the National Assembly. As a consultant to the Bureau of Public Enterprises, he and now Honorable Justice Namdi Dimba drafted the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission Bill, now an act, relating to antitrust and competition law in Nigeria. Dr. Edige SAN was the consultant that drafted the IOD Charter Bill and was a member of the Institute of Directors Charter Committee pursuing the promulgation of this law. He remains an active facilitator for the IOD on members' training. A prolific author, Dr. Idige SAN's book, The Legal Aspects of Capital Market Operations, is a reference material for training and practice of corporate governance and capital market operations in Nigeria. Dr. Anthony Ikeme Funa Idige SAN is the senior partner at Punuka Attorneys and Solicitors. He is involved with consultancy, business, and human capital development through the Canadian affiliate of the Punuka Consulting Incorporations. Please join me with a rousing round of applause to make welcome <laughs> Chief Anthony Ikemefuna, Idibe SAN PhD. You are much welcome, sir. Provincial and proprietor of Dominican University, the vice chancellor, the members of the board of trustees of Dominican University here present, the members of the governing council, members of the faculties administrative staff, Dominican brothers here present, all religious, our graduating students, our current students, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I have been asked to select my topic for today's lecture. And I chose to speak on making an impact, birthing the vision of Dominican University Ibadan.
Perhaps it's not by coincidence, but providence, that I have been invited to deliver this foundation lecture as part of the inaugural convocation of the first Dominican University in Africa. My path with the Dominicans started as a teenager. In 1974, my parents moved to Alaka Estate in Surulere from Ilaka Street in Ilupeju Estate, Lagos. And so did attending mass from St. Agnes Catholic Church, Maryland to St. Dominic's Catholic Church, Yaba. In addition, this is the second lecture I'll be delivering at this university in this very hall. The first being the opening lecture which I delivered, I believe it was October 2nd, 2018, in which I argued that, quote, education without development or development without sustainable impact can be avoided if national priorities in development and education are properly set, pursued, and implemented, unquote. I actually concluded that lecture with a parting shot querying Dominican University about where it wants to be in the dilemma that I painted. Today, I have the unenviable task by the province of God of responding to that very query which I placed before Dominican University in 2018. Now, current global events that bring uncertainty to life, as we all know, includes the COVID-19 pandemic, other health and safety universities are citadels for contemplation, research, and teaching on those society's contemporary problems that I just listed. If you check history, that's what universities do. So the Dominican University, Baden, run by the Dominican Order, an international religious organization with 800 years of education and human development tradition, is no different. I am proud to chair its board of trustees. Some scholars argue that universities already originally began around religious communities as priests and Catholic monks started offering education according to prevailing need and thirst to solve problems of society. In fact, historians point to the papal dec decree of Pope Gregory the um, seventh in 1079 that ordered the establishment of cathedral schools run by monks, priests, and nuns to provide higher education that eventually developed into universities. An example, of course, was the University of uh, uh, Bologna in, in 1088 AD, or the University of Paris in 1150, Oxford University in, in 1167. And uh, where St. Dominic sent the first uh, Pharisees to study. But it should not be lost on us that the evangelical mission of Jesus to his disciples over a thousand years earlier is to one, bring light to the world by preaching the gospel, and two, educate the ignorant. So a thousand years before the, 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 the church started setting up these universities, uh, the, the, mission was, the mission was already given. However, the truth is that while the modern concept of university can be traced to the Catholic Church, the earlier Greek city states before them and cities like Timbuktu here in Africa and Damascus, following the rise of the Asharite school of thought, rejecting human reasoning and scholarship. The Asharite is... Uh, is the precursor of the Sunni, uh, current Sunni uh, Muslim approach. 
as states began to rise to prominence in Europe, governments sought to break the hold of the Catholic Church on education by disallowing university, uh, universities that are loyal to the Pope. The degree and nature of endorsement or financial support uh, um, with issues around freedom uh, of other faiths to practice, uh, prohibiting any competing religion, uh, religious bodies from operating and persecuting followers of other sects. Now, this, this happens both between different religions and within one religion, let's say Christianity, right? If you check the history. Um, in Europe, competition between Catholics and uh, Protestant uh, denominated 100 hectares of land, presuming they are physical institutions. Today, with digital transformation, universities are more than physical institutions. The Dominican University started as the Dominican uh, Institute, an institution for forming priests and religious for the other. Therefore, the takeoff site at Ibadan, next to the University of Ibadan, was deliberate. It shared faculty and courses with the University of Ibadan and the major seminary also located in Ibadan. And its students graduated with University of Ibadan degrees. With its license in 2017 and a 100 hectare permanent site, the new university is in the process of transformation from a religious educational institution. I will also discuss how it intends to birth the vision regarding its culture, encouragement of STEM courses, humanities, technology and innovation, agriculture, medical and health sciences, nursing and supply chain management, transport and leadership. Why we know where we are going or should be going we think the problems of our context have attained such complexity that dialogue becomes necessary, prompting this lecture to share our vision with the faculty, the support staff, and the students. DU as a living metaphor. When the Dominican Institute started, the Nigeria Ghana province was the youngest in the Dominican order to take such a bold step. It had nothing in terms of structures but a clear vision and a will for, or determination to begin to sow seeds of reform that is refuses any attempt to uh, circumscribe it, to circumscribe the idea that, that part why we are an image of God is the fact that we have the intellectual ability. For a fact, our imagination is our way of participating in God's creative genius. Through our imagination, we mirror God's creative intellect. The great discoveries of all ages prove man's exercise of this power. The only problem is that science often shamelessly denies their mouthpiece. You know, so when they come, they so cut and paste that I will say, how come the funct on the the top side of the paper is different from the font. They don't even know that they should harmonize it. <laughs> so giving uh, uh, students just read to pass exams instead of a habit to drive knowledge and inquiry. I see it also. Uh, they know in my office, they de when they de try to delegate upwards, so I will do the thinking for them. I delegate it back to them. Lecturers with the habit of giving or selling outdated handouts, we have no place and cannot survive at Dominican University. At Dominican University, the idea of lecturing as a critical service delivery for social engineering will be robustly promoted. Secondly, pursuing excellence would enable Dominican University to achieve its primary mandate of helping unleash a quantum leap in human capitalities, management studies, and social sciences. Dominican University is not a university for every discipline under the sun, but carefully chosen disciplines that have the overall goal of meeting the primary vision 
for which the university was founded. The objective is to achieve a well-rounded education for students in each program. Therefore, all Dominican University programs will be intentionally crafted to provide each student with 21st century skills at their graduation so that they are not just employable anywhere in the world or relevant to their field of study, but become job creators and builders of society themselves. So it's not just about bringing us to. So as I said, uh, we employers seeking different skills for new job hiring. Government and private funders are looking for more measurable economic impact from the universities. Universities offering purely online degrees, such as ASU Online, Coursera, etc., are, com are competitors. As customers' needs change, so is the competition between traditional, non traditional universities. and even non-universities providing online courses. For instance, the National Open University of Nigeria now has this large telepresence-based work projects, online micro-classes for students to explore interests between semesters, um, a life coach program for the final two years that combines career and social skills, and alumni to student mentoring programs now that we are producing our first set of alumni. So we'll be calling on you to run that program of mentoring our existing students. Despite our emphasis on digital transformation, we understand the need for a befitting campus as part of the branding of the university. According to social service, Make friends, that is the biggest asset you are going to take away for the future. So consequently, the BOT is committed to developing a prestigious permanent campus for Dominican University at Omotosho. In this regard, the proprietor has set up a project implementation committee which reports to the BOT. Work has resumed in earnest on developing a permanent site in phases. It is planned that some activities we commence there, um, say in the next three to five years, culminating in the formation of moral character with the development of one's creative talent, the use of one's hand, uh, etc. Henceforth, Dominica So, um, So we hope to reclaim the dignity of the academic discipline of humanities. A proper career counseling session is offered free um, uh, to give a deeper understanding. And um, it's our aim that DU should not just be a place to get formal education, but a platform for reorientation of our minds, how we see the world, and our role in it. To illustrate this point, Local stories abound of students who change courses or take courses they hate just to get into the university. You know, tell the story. Uh, there is uh, a gentleman, uh, it, it was uh, uh, a native Indian, uh, American, uh, well, Canadian Indian, La Forme. He, the first indigenous um, Api court judge, and she said, uh, as an indigenous child, and I quote, I'm quoting her, as an indigenous child, I had dreams about life and possibilities it held. None included law or sitting in a court of appeal. That was a dream for others, those who were not like me. That's meaning the white people. Nevertheless, life's journey includes circumstances that take us off the path we might believe is ours forever, unquote. So she never dreamt that she would be a lawyer, she would be at the Court of Appeal because of the discrimination against native Canadians here. Yeah. 
That is what for happy people. Finding solutions to problem of our contest. As I round up, it is essential to emphasize the underlying inspiration behind Dominican University. It takes us back to the original role of the tertiary institution as the incubator for developing solutions to the problems of the society, which I mentioned at the beginning. I hinted at the beginning how universities developed not just as a response to the quest for knowledge, but that kings and leaders saw higher education as the key to solving the problems of their different societies. At the end of the day, Dominican University, and any university for that matter, will be relevant to the extent that it answers myriads of societal problems. The University of Bologna began as a law school, providing knowledge of Roman law, which was in high demand as people sought a way to defend the rights of nations against the overreaching influence of some empires and the church. Universities such as Oxford, Cambridge, Stanford, Harvard, MIT, Toronto, academic ambitions for postgraduate study immediately after my call to the bar in July 1983. However, my dreams were cut short when I lost my dad on July 31st, 1983. I had to start life immediately, but I never gave up my dreams. Over the last 39 years, I have managed to achieve two LLMs, one GPLLM, one MBA, one PhD, three certificates and postgraduate diplomas from some of the best universities in the world, such as IFE, Unilag, ESUT, Robert Gordon University, University of Toronto, Osgoode Hall, uh, uh, York University, Harvard, Emeritus Business School, etc. And I'm also licensed, uh, as you've been told, to practice both in Nigeria and Canada. Our value proposition for our students. Our overall value proposition is for Dominican University to be the launch pad for your professional and personal life as an adult. The value elements of our value proposition includes providing foundational knowledge in the core subject areas, exploration of interest and self-discovery, socialization and formation of friendships and character, building of school pride, which we hope to build through athletics, etc. Career network, pairs who will be part of their career network after graduation. Credentialing, e.g. a degree which provides opportunities, you know, like uh, we, if you are doing accountancy, we connect you with ICANN, so you can also get uh, their credential. Our vision for education, in line with my opening argument that education plays a crucial role in building the human capacity needed to drive the national development agenda, we call on the government to ensure alignment between development goals and education strategy. Where the conceptualization or, and or the implementation of development objectives and education strategy are at variance, then education may not achieve the outcome of meeting national uh, development aspirations. I agree with uh, Merrick Gettler, the president of the University of Toronto, sorry again, uh, I'm going back to my school, <laughs> my apologies, <laughs> that amid increasing turmoil and polarization around the world, the university must be a place that secures and fosters democracy. Consequently, Dominican University must create and remain an ivory tower of different ideas, excellence, and diversity, and be accessible to a broad range of prospective son, Ibadan Ag uh, Archbishop Alabajo, my predecessor as, um, in office as chairman of the BOT. Their contribution and those of others, too numerous to mention, are invaluable to the realization of the Dominican University vision we have the privilege of refining today. Graduates, 
our first ambassadors. You are our pioneer students. Like all pioneers, you worked with us at our worst moments. You saw our lapses and weaknesses up close. So you may not yet be impressed with our performance. The motto of Dominicans worldwide is Veritas, truth. In his classic work, the protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism argues that Christian norm of hard work urging profligacy and worldly success as a measure of predestined faith spoiled the regime of capitalism. In other words, that, that if you work hard then, and do things right, you are likely to go to heaven. And that is the reason why Christians work hard and they're able to create wealth. That was his argument. Dominican University has simply been the platform for you. Another round of applause, please. Thank you very much. Um, like the VC said in his remarks, we're not going to take questions. Uh, we're not going to take questions, but we're going to have two discussants uh, join our guest lecturer on the table uh, to, to discuss uh, what he has presented. Well, if you were to ask me what he has said, well, all I would say is that he has said a lot of things. He has said a lot of things, and he has said a lot of things because it is not my place uh, to discuss that. But uh, two things I, I picked from him. Samuel Johnson says that if you want to be wise, you should make lawyers your friends because they know life practically. So we are going to give them 20 minutes, uh, 10 minutes each to discuss or to present to us what they got from the paper. And after that, we are going to give our guest lecturer two minutes to round off in case they said something that needs uh, a little clarification. So we're going to start with Dr. Ekong. Our guest speaker, my prior provincial, the vice chancellor, Dominican University, invited guest members of the faculty with some of the things we heard from our guest speaker. The vision of the Dominican University is to strive to be a center of excellence for quality, technological, humanitarian, and managerial education for its products. The university will be respected for excellence of all its activities in teaching, research, and service. And by its unshakable commitment to educating the youth for leadership and service to Nigeria and the global community, the university will engender in the students the spirit and quality of leadership that will manifest in form of service. Now, um, I have a little bit of experience in hospitality business since I chaired the Capital Hotel that owns uh, the former Abuja Sheraton. It's been changed to Abuja Continental now after we sold it. I still chair Ikeja Hotel, which owns Ikeja um, uh, um, Sheraton, and Tourist Company, which owns um, um, Federal Palace. I'm not a shareholder, though. I'm there as part of business restructuring, so I was invited to help them with their problems. Um, but I learned a little bit about hotel business. Um, so if a hotel, you, usually you will refresh the hotel because tastes of the customers are changing from time to time. So maybe they built a hotel 20 years ago 
and then they are using now maybe that time they put only one point and they didn't have uh, UBS sockets and things like that so uh, 20 years ago so today you need to renovate the room change the, uh, the, the, the toilet trees have gone out of fashion uh, you need to put more electrical points uh, etc it's normal otherwise customers will stop stop coming um, so I'm giving you that example to understand that that is also how any other business is, including university business. Things actually change, and like if you have a hotel, at some point you have to renovate it and bring it up to the taste of your customers, otherwise you, you lose your customers. So that's, in a sense, is everything I have said in my paper. But there's still one more point I want to make. When we now want to do the renovation, we do what is called a mock room. So they, they, will, they will fix a room. Let's say they, you have 500 rooms in the hotel. You will fix one room, which is the model of how all the rooms are going to be. So people see it, and then they can envision where it will be in future. Um, uh, you, at times, if it's a building project, a estate, you do a showroom, right? So people go there and see how the flat will be like and everything. So what I will do, uh, what I decided between yesterday and today is that um, the money that the university spent on that fountain, I would use it uh, to do a mock classroom for you. So that mock classroom would be like an ultra-modern classroom. Thank you. So the idea is that if you have a mock classroom, everybody, from your vice chancellor to your faculty to the students, you will be seeing it when you pass. This is the vision. This is where we are supposed to go to. So all of you will work hard to go that way. Thank you. We say thank you to our guest lecturer, thank you to our discussants for a very interesting discussion. And we're going to move forward to the other part of the program, but before we go there, I want to recognize the presence of some people. Um, the presence of Dr. Nancy Wood, Acting Dean of Faculty of Science. The, presence of Sister Margaret Fabra Mingbe, Director of SPRAY, that is the School of Pastoral and Religious Studies run by the Dominican University, Dominican Institute. And she's also my classmate, so we own the place in a way. She, myself, and the registrar will belong to one class, so be careful. <laughs> All right, we will recognize the presence of Professor Kilagwe. He's the HOD of MASCOM. <laughs> the presence of Mrs. Titi Abijo, she's the admission officer. <laughs> and the presence of Sister Mary Christine Ogobid, she's our exam officer. <laughs> According to our program now, we're supposed to move to the presentation of gift. And we're going to call on Dr. Nancy Woods to do that on behalf of the university. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you once again to our guest lecturer, Chief Anthony Idigbe, S.A.N., for delivering the wonderful um, lecture. This can you? So with profound um, appreciation, the Dominican University Ibado hereby presents this award of honor to you, 
a distinguished and exceptional chairman, board of trustees, Chief Anthony Idigwe, SAN, PhD. On the occasion of your delivery of the first Foundation Day Memorial Lecture of the University today. Thank you very much. Before I continue, I just realized uh, something. Our guest speaker, uh, when he was in his lecture, he made reference to the pioneer uh, VC, Professor Anthony Akinwale. But also, our pioneer registrar has been here from the beginning. And because he was hiding behind <laughs> the cameras, uh, we didn't uh, acknowledge him, so I want to call on Reverend Father Kenneth Kadi to please stand up. For <laughs> That's the pioneer registrar of the university. Those graduating tomorrow will be going to have graduates from the BA Philosophy Program, business, uh, BSc Business Administration, BSc Business Accounting, BSc Economics, BSc Computer Science, Science, and BSc Christian Religious Study, BSc Mass Com, and others. So uh, we are happy. This is what we are doing here is to honor you, and we hope that will continue to get good results from your work out there. For our students who are here supporting them, you, you're doing well, huh? But if you come to class without reading my text on Monday, we have a problem, you know that. We are going to call on Reverend Professor Dukun Oyeshola, the Dean of Faculty of Humanities, to give the vote of thanks. On behalf of the university, I'm moving this gratitude, as it were, not only to you, but to all the other people who are here. And so I'm beginning to talk first and foremost in relation to all those who are more or less behind the scene, who are not always being talked about all those who are doing a lot of work, silently, we are appreciating you, we are thanking you, wherever you may be. So once again, thank you for all those individuals who have volunteered their time and energy, who have been supportive in all these type of activities. We are always appreciating you. In many settings, this category of people are not always being mentioned and we must begin to do something that is radically different from what we used to put before. So I'm recognizing and I'm expressing our gratitude onto all this category of people. Uh, Chief Dr. Anthony Idigwe San, Chairman, Board of Trustees, Dominican University, Ibadan, Senior Partner, of Danuka Attorney and Solicitors. You are not the only person who has an history with Ileife. I'm also part and parcel. <laughs> I'm also part and parcel of that experience, that history. Although I came in after you had graduated, 
but nonetheless, I spent about 28 good years in that university. So I'm supporting you, and then we're going to collaborate in so many areas. So once again, thank you. I want to also make a little contribution to some of the things we have talked about very, very briefly, calling attention to core values of the university. These include hard work. All those ones came out when you are talking. Integrity, discipline, honesty, collaboration, truthfulness, creativity. Dominican University also promotes accountability, transparency, justice, politeness, service, self-reliance, tolerance, patience, self-sacrifice, and sense of responsibility. They are part and parcel of what came out while you are. You cannot do it alone. You are going to do it and all that. Again, you also quickly went through the history of the Dominican University, and finally, how to realize the goal of the university. So all these are part and parcel of what went through in my mind when you are making your presentation. Thank you for the insight you have given in these areas. Again, from what you have said, collaboratively, all of us together, we are going to achieve the goal of the university. Amen. 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 Again, from what you have said and the way you have presented your statements, definitely some ideas came out. The idea of enlightenment, that we are here to be enlightened as an institution, the idea of encouragement, as you are supporting, you are encouraging all of us, all that is also coming from what you have said. And then the idea of dreams, before a reality comes out, it must begin with a dream, sometimes with an individual, sometimes with a collective. So you are supporting that idea, and we thank God for, for, for that. And at the end of the day, the element of commitment not only what you have said, but what you have also, is it promise, the classroom thing? Is, I think we fulfilled. <laughs> that one is inclusive. So once again, we are very, very appreciative. We thank you for all the things you have been doing and you are still going to continue to do. May God in his goodness continue to give you the strength, the encouragement, the wisdom, and the courage to move ahead, not only in your business world, but also in your responsibility as our, is it direct? Okay, the, uh, the, the chairperson, the, cha the chairman of the BOT. So once again, we appreciate for all the things we have done and for the presentations we have made. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. This is my dean. Okay, we re recognize a few other people around, uh, Professor Nike Emeke and husband. My apologies for recognizing you late because you were there from the very beginning and I noticed that. Uh, I want to... recognize the past president of the student council. The student council is a very powerful thing in this institution, if you don't know. So let's recognize the past president of the student council, uh, Brother Vincent Obasiopi. <laughs> and the, pres uh, the current president of the student council, Brother Valerian Paul Opi. Father Stan, I know you're there. I recognize your presence. And we recognize the presence of Dr. Dele Oladejo. She's the HOD of Management Studies. 
With that, we are gradually coming to the end of the program, or I would say we have come to the end of the program. I want to thank you all for your presence, uh, for your participation. And we can call the day a successful day. I think we can say so. Uh, we thank our guest lecturer for the, uh, for the wonderful lecture. And all of us who have made it so far, we hope that tomorrow will be another beautiful day. So. To our students who are graduating, I'm, I'm happy to see some of them. In fact, I, I had started forgot. It's, it's, it's like that. Lecturers, it's like once the batch of students move out, we'll begin to forget. So we we'll call on our prior provincial, the proprietor, the chancellor, very Reverend Father Modest to go to give us the closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, in a special way, we, your children, stand before you at this moment to thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your great blessing on our institution, the Dominican University, Baden here. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful journey you have started with us. We thank you for the great plans beyond our own imagination you have for the future of this university. We thank you for all the life of our students, the graduates who are going in, who are into the world now as our ambassadors. Lord, we ask for your blessings upon them. We ask for your blessings upon all our students. We ask for your blessings upon all the staff here. And for each and every one of us, for all the sacrifices we are making for the growth of our university. May you bless all our effort that will grow from, grow from grace to grace to the glory of your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you and God bless you. Please we need an uh, we need some photographs. We need some photographs before we leave. Please don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. Other photographs, please. Professor of Welcome, uh, uh, Father Patrick Akune, we are waiting on you. Photographs. Oh, Professor Kilagwe, come up. Father Obialo, please come up. Please, we would like to remind us that the event for tomorrow. The convocation ceremony begins by 11 a.m. And all the school officials are to be at the talk shop at the cafeteria by 10.30 when the procession begins. The procession tomorrow begins by 10.30 and the event begins by 11 a.m. Thank you. So we would like to have some good photographs let us have some official group photographs, please. We'll begin with the members of the high table, the proprietor, the guest speaker for the day, the vice chancellor, please. Let's begin with those three, please. Sorry, fathers and professors. Okay, all right, so let's begin with this as we have it. Prof. Prof, please. Okay, thank you. Yeah, give me a hand. Yes. All right, Professor Schenke, Professor Mokolo, Professor Ofo, please. Doing the group photograph. All right, thank you. I'll be taking these shots. All right, Dr. Nancy Woods, please join. Yes, 
Thank you. Sorry. All right. Father Ibido, please. Would you join? Thank you. Thank you. So now we are going to have photograph of the proprietor, the guest speaker, and all the professors who are around. Thank you. The proprietor, the guest speaker, and all the professors. Of course, the vice chancellor, Professor Shenge, Professor Emeke, Professor Okolo, Professor Kulagwe, Professor Ofo. Thank you. Vice Chancellor, please, would you say close to the proprietor? Vice Chancellor, please. Thank you. All right. All the professors. Where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way. Thank you. We have the proprietor, the guest speaker, the vice chancellor, and the deans of the faculty. Dr. Nancy Woods, please, will you join? Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. So the semi-final is going to be the proprietor, the guest speaker, and the vice chancellor. That's going to be the semi-final for this workshop. Thank you. All right, vice chancellor, we'll move to the other side. So now. Yes, yes, please. Sorry. We cannot see. He will make a way to me. Lost it of them. Thank you. Doctor Ekong, is he still around? Okay, please. Discuss and please. Will you join? Doctor Ekong. So the final picture is going to be that of everybody present here, please. Everybody present here. All due lecturers, please. All due lecturers. And staff, all due staff. Not just lecturers. All due staff. Student Council President, please come in. Due staff, Dr. Father Felix. All the you staff. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Thank you. All other guests, please. If you don't mind. All other guests. Another person. Thank you. 